always love hip hop. Keep it flowing like a river, so I drip drop. Versus in bars, we eating dinner with the stars. Excuse me while I float away, my brain is on Mars. Cause it's the Big Hits Podcast with Chris Williams. Sit back, relax, like your spliff, we in the building. Well, I think if they win, I should get all the credit, and if they lose, I should not be blamed at all. They're, they are saying it was Trump's fault for killing the red wave. The red wave, if, if, at, at most, has become sort of a red trickle. Barely, barely, barely a red trickle. Forget the red wave, the red tide, whatever it was, it doesn't matter at this point. How is this not a red wave? Still this question about whether or not there is a red wave this evening, and it seems to be a bit tempered. And it was because these women just went crazy. So we need these ladies to get married. And it's time to fall in love and just settle down. Guys, go put a ring on it. And there's a religion of demons that loves abortion. You gotta recognize the fact that this is a godless country. First, we're not a cult. Crime! 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 These are real time crime spikes, machine manipulation. But that's why we need uh, dictatorship. <laughs> that's unironically why we need to get rid of all that. We need to take control of the media or take control of the government and force the people to believe what we believe. Uh, his wife, I call her Coco Chow. We the people are requesting military step in and redo our elections. They have treated him like crap. His family stand by Herschel tonight. If you can give, give. How can he keep the almighty oath to the almighty God and he keep it for them? He hasn't kept it for neither nobody. So that proves the type of man he really is. I was running against a basement candidate who didn't even campaign, didn't debate, and the people didn't vote for her. There was zero excitement, and this is ridiculous. I've always said I'm not afraid of the civil war and the GOP. I lean into it. Don't even want voter ID. I need a voter ID to buy a beer. Uh, you, you need it to buy a pack of cigarettes. I don't smoke cigarettes. Uh, to buy a jewel pot, you airplane. need it for that too. Open up a checking account. Yeah. Uh oh. Yo, yo, yo! It's Chris Williams, and welcome back to the Big Kids Podcast. And guys, that's a mess, huh? It's 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 really never anything new with these people. It's the same shit. They want a dictator. They want they want a strong man. They want somebody to tell them what to do, when to do it. But when it's somebody that they don't deem um, qualified, <laughs> I'll say for a lack of a better word, they go against them. They're always small government until it has to do with something that they don't agree with. It's always let the states do it until it's something that they don't agree with. The way that they operate, meaning the Republican Party, it seems to be they only want the federal government to step in when they feel everybody should do something. But when in terms of their guns, abortions... They want the local jurisdiction to, to, to have a say in, in, in how things go. And that hypocrisy did not serve them too well over the past week. As you guys know, they lost the Senate. As of right now, I'm pretty sure the House is still up for, for, for grabs. But there was supposed to be a red wave. This was supposed to be the end of the Democratic Party. This was supposed to be a hundred years of Repub of Republican rule. <laughs> and that is not what is happening. And why is that not what is happening? Because people don't want you deciding what's best for them. Especially when all you do is lie and manipulate the facts. Guys, you didn't care. You you I you know how I know you didn't care? Because when Mitch McConnell when Mitch McConnell was asked, if you guys take back the Senate, what are your plans? And guys, you could look this up. I'm not lying. He said, we'll let you know when we win the Senate back. How is that what you're running on? How is, how is that what you're going to bring to people and think that they should just vote for you just because? 
And your only thing that you continuously bring up is inflation. First of all, if the Republicans were in charge, the inflation would be the same fucking thing. Why? Because this is a global issue, not a United States issue. This is happening to everybody across the fucking globe. Okay? Two, border crisis. Okay, I the numbers are a little up. We can we could say that. But they're not that much more or they the difference isn't that much of a a difference. <laughs> The difference isn't that much of a difference between when Trump was the president and Biden being the president. But they think Biden should be impeached. Biden should be locked up. Guys, it's been a problem. Building that fence did not work. People are climbing over it. People are going under it. And separating families, that's what we're going to do to deter people from coming over here? That's why people stop coming over here as much and why they're coming over a little bit more like they were in previous years. You were stripping mothers from their kids, separating fathers from their families. And that's why you got a little a little uh, 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 1% decrease, a little 1.3% 1, 1. decrease in border crossings. Come on, stop it. So if that's all you guys got to run on, how are you surprised that you did not have a red wave? Please explain to me that. What you guys run on is trickle-down economics, and you guys have done it for 30-something years, closer to 40 years you guys have been doing this. Why do you think giving rich people tax breaks and more money is going to result in us having more opportunities? That is not how that works. Why do you think rich people want to give us their money? Why do you think what you gave them the money or let them keep the money, what, what is incentivizing them to, to get pass it on to us, to let us get a piece? There is none. There is none. And still, every once in a while, they disguise it in different jargon and lingo. But every once in a while, you'll hear the phrase trickle down economics from these Republicans because that's what they believe in. They don't believe in giving me, you, whoever, whoever may be able to get really ahead in life and move up and level up a little bit of student loan forgiveness. Guys, we're talking 20 grand. Are you fucking serious? People were stealing more money than that during fucking the pandemic. Lawmakers were stealing more money than that during the pandemic. And then they got it forgiven. Loans and shit that they probably weren't even qualified for in the first place. Or or it's a gray area. Should I apply for this? Shouldn't I apply for this? Well, ah, oh, fuck it. I'm not going to get in trouble either way. I'm going to do it. There was way more money in terms of that being passed around and forgiven than fucking student loans. Again, guys, they're not forgiving everybody. They're not forgetting, forgiving every single cent. They're forgiving a certain portion, a certain amount. Come on. We, we, something's got to give. Something's got to give. But I'm telling you guys right now, I think there is light at the end of the tunnel. And I think that's due to Donald Trump. <laughs> I truly believe that's due to Donald Trump and the monster that the Republicans created in Donald Trump. In a minute, guys, I promise you, you could quote me. You could write this down, take a picture. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you could do all of that in a matter of 12 months. Unless Ron DeSantis wants to kiss the ring, unless Ron DeSantis wants to get on national TV, not only endorse Donald Trump, but apologize, butt cheeks wide open, I'm sorry. Unless he's going to do that, shit is going to get ugly. Or whoever may be a possible candidate that we don't know about, Donald Trump is going to make it ugly ugly and before i go any further guys i want to just play you know uh, uh donald trump announcing he's running for president again for a third time and ron DeSantis's rebuttal i'm gonna play both of those clips for you guys they're each about two minutes long i'm gonna play those for you and then we'll we'll, we'll continue to talk about this 
In order to make America great and glorious again, I am tonight announcing my candidacy for President of the United States. So many incredible friends and family here tonight. It's such a beautiful thing. It's some people say, how do you speak before so many people all the time? If when there's love in the room, it's really easy if you want to know the truth. It really is. You ought to try it sometime. <laughs> Together we will be taking on the most corrupt forces and entrenched interests imaginable. Our country is in a horrible state. We're in grave trouble. This is not a task for a politician or a conventional candidate. This is a task for a great movement that embodies the courage, confidence, and the spirit of the American people. This is a movement. This is not for any one individual. This is a job for tens of millions of proud people working together from all across the land and from all walks of life, young and old, black and white, Hispanic and Asian, many of whom we have brought together for the very, very first time. If you look at the numbers, if you look at what's happened with Hispanic, with African American, with Asian, and just look at what's happening. This is a party that has become much bigger, much stronger, much more powerful, can do much more good for our country. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching. We'd like to know what you think about Trump's big announcement and some of the less than flattering comments he has made about you. Well, you know, one of the things I've learned, like learned in this job, is. Um, uh, when you're do when you're leading, when you're getting getting things done, yeah, you take incoming fire. That's just the nature of it. Uh, I roll out of bed in the morning. I've got corporate media outlets that have a spasm just the fact that I'm getting up in the morning, and it's constantly attacking. And this is just what's happened. I don't think any governor got attacked more, particularly by corporate media, than me over my four-year term. And yet, I think what you what you learn is all that's just noise. And really what matters is, are you leading? Are you getting in front of issues? Uh, are you delivering results for people? And are you standing up for folks? And if you do that, then none of that stuff matters. And, and that's what we've done. We focused on results and leadership. And uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, I would just uh, tell people to go check out the scoreboard from last Tuesday night. Uh, the fact of the matter is, You know, the fact of the matter is, we, um, it, it was the, the, the greatest uh, Republican victory in the history of the state of Florida. And it wasn't just the best governor victory, of course it was that, but we swept in, we swept in super majorities in the Florida legislature. We have 85 Republicans out of 120 in our state house. We've never had that many before. We have 28 senators out of 40 that are Republicans. Never had that many, and honestly, they could have had 29 if they would have done the Osceola one. You know, I, we won Osceola County uh, at the top of the ticket, and I think we probably could have done that. So, so you see that. You see the school boards. We're electing all these great people to school boards. We had tw 16 Republican members of the U.S. House from Florida. Now we have 20 uh, going up there. So that's four, four seats right there. So, so at the end of the day, I think people respond to, to the leadership. They respond uh, to the results. And so that's why, even though I know anytime I do anything, you're over the target, you know, you're going to face incoming. That's just the nature of it. But that's not uh, ultimately uh, what matters to people. What matters to people is are you standing up for them, are you leading, and are you getting things done? And we are. Yeah. Guys, this is going to get ugly. This is going to get ugly. And Donald Trump does not care. And I really don't think that Ron DeSantis understands where this can possibly go. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. Donald Trump is not above calling for violence. Donald Trump is not above airing his own shit out because he doesn't care. 
to air your shit out at the same time to make you look bad. He's not above that. Donald Trump has run for president two times. Not governor. Not senate. President. Two times. We know what we need to know about Donald Trump. Or we know what we're going to know about Donald Trump. We know he's a fraud. We know that while he was running for president and while he was in the White House, he was paying off porn stars to shut the hell up about what happened. We know these things. We've heard him on, 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 on camera, on TV. We heard where he will take it. We've seen his tweets. We saw what he did on January 6th. We saw all these things. I don't know if 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 Ron and the Republican Party understands where this man will take it. And he does not give a damn about the Republican Party. Not a single damn about the Republican Party. And whether he wins the nomination for the Republican Party or not, Donald Trump would rather see Ron DeSantis lose if he loses to Ron than than a Republican be in the White House. That's just simple. That's simple. Donald Trump was a Democrat for most of his life. <laughs> Donald Trump was a Democrat. He saw a lane with the Republican Party. He saw the monster that they were ready to create and he jumped on board. That's exactly what happened. Exactly what happened. And I don't think that these guys understand the monster that they made. You made the bed. Now you guys got to sleep in it. You think that Donald Trump is not taking notes of every single person that's running their mouth about him last or the past week saying it's his fault. Why the red wave didn't come to be. Do you think he's not doing these things? Every single one of you is going to have to answer to this man. I don't care what the donors are saying and doing. I don't care what the congressmen, men and women, the Senate are saying and doing. Donald Trump runs that party. He runs that party. And if Donald Trump tells people don't go vote, enough people aren't going to go vote. I promise you, I would say at a minimum, at a minimum, Donald Trump, if he was to put out a tweet or, or a truth saying that he doesn't like Ron DeSantis, he doesn't think Ron DeSantis should be the president, five to 10 million people off rip aren't going to vote off rip guys. You saw January 6th that that was a group of people. I don't even know. It was definitely in the thousands. That was a group of people that on, what was it, a Tuesday or a Wednesday, decided they were taking off work, taking off a couple of days of work, actually, and they were going to go to Washington, D.C. and turn the fuck up. Like, turn the fuck up. Not like a normal rally, not like a normal fucking shindig. They were ready to go tear shit Nobody, nobody else has the juice like that. Nobody in this country has the juice like that. Motherfucker's going to miss work. Go do that shit. And just imagine, guys, just imagine if this shit was on a Saturday. It was on a Saturday. Washington, D.C. was just a little further south. Just imagine if, the, if, if these things were actual reality. How many people would have showed up that day and tore shit up? They would have got Mike Pence. They would have got Nancy Pelosi. They would have gotten a whole bunch of Republicans that were for Trump at the time. But they don't know about these people because they don't see them on Fox News. They don't see them on these crazy ass news networks. And they would have got theirs, too. It would have been absolutely horrific. And that's the type of power that this man possesses. Ron has no idea. The Republicans have no idea what they did. They should have left him on The Apprentice. They should have left his ass on The Apprentice when they when he was initially running against all those people and they were running their mouths and he was running his mouth. At the end of the day, who kissed whose ass? Lindsey Graham crying for Herschel Walker earlier. Who what was he saying and whose ass got kissed after he said it? Ted Cruz. What did he say about your dad? He said your dad killed JFK. He called your wife an ugly pig or something along those lines. And who kissed whose ass? 
You guys created this monster. I don't know why you think that you're just going to wipe your hands clean of this man. I don't know why Ron, after Donald Trump being the one that put him on, thinks that he's just going to disregard Trump, his wishes, his will. You're just going to disregard it because now you think you got your own little following. Guys, it's going to get ugly. It's going to be great fucking TV. It's going to be absolutely marvelous TV. I may start tuning back into the news channels every once in a while to see what's going on. But I, at, at this point, I don't even think I need to do that. I have my, I have the Midas Touch. I have the Lincoln Project. I have David Pakman. I have uh, uh, Jesse Dollimore. I have a couple people that I don't need to go back to watching news to, to, to figure out what's going on in the world anymore. But... I still may I still may tune in. Actually, nah, because that's what they want. Guys, I guarantee you last night Trump or the other night when you hear this, Trump announced announcing that he was running for president again was the most views CNN has gotten in quite some time. Quite some time. And they don't care. That's what that's what this shit is all about. It's not about the news. It's not about reporting and doing your homework and doing research. It's about what can I put on this station that's going to get me the most views. End of story. End of fucking story. That's what that's what they do. Do you really think CNN would be that upset if Donald Trump was the president again? Or if there was a Republican civil war, they're going to be all over that shit. They're going to be all over that. And I believe what happens, again, what the fuck do I know? But I believe what happens is somebody like a Gavin Newsom gets to parlay a Republican Civil War into becoming the President of the United States. I believe a Gretchen Whitmer, what's her name, Gretchen Whitmer? The one where the, the MAGA people tried to tried to kidnap her and kill her the michigan governor gretchen gretchen Whit, i think it's whitmer whatever you know you know what i'm talking about i think somebody like that gets to sneak in because i'm telling you right now what the democrats aren't going to do and i think this is the only way that they mess this up is if they create their own civil war and the way things are set up right now, that would have to be the dumbest thing you could possibly do. That's dumber than Pete Carroll calling a pass play in the Super Bowl when you have Marshawn Lynch at the half inch at the half half yard marker to go in to win the game. You know what? We're gonna throw this ball <laughs> instead of giving it to beast mode. That that's what, that's how dumb it would be if they decided to have a civil war within the democratic party so i just i don't see that happening i don't democrats yes they'll go back and forth when it's primary time but when it's when it's all said and done they get behind one another donald trump is not going i promise you he's not going to do that i promise you he's not going to do that he he is not capable of doing that and if what he's done up until this point has not showed you that i don't i what will that man does not care about the Republican Party as a whole. He cares about what the Republican Party can get him. Guys, just recently, just recently, like within the last couple of days, he started a fundraiser for Herschel Walker, who's having a runoff against the, the sitting senator, Raphael Warnock. So Donald Trump, in his capacity as the ex-president and the leader of the Republican Party, decides to start a fundraiser. Now, you know, most people, when they do a fundraiser, they click on, okay, I'm donating $5. Do you accept? Click, click, click. Yep, yeah, okay. There's some little couple buttons down here in the left corner. This money will be allocated to small print type shit. Okay, you're just clicking through. You know, you're thinking, this is th th this is my president. This is my leader. Why would he try to jit me? Why, why, why would this multi-billionaire, as, as he claims it, why would he jit me? So I'm just clicking through, do, 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 reoccurring, reoccurring's already set down here automatically, not, you get, you clicked it so you can make reoccurring payments, no, it's, it's, it's already pre-clicked, all right, cool, cool, boom, boom, all right, couple months goes by, 
week goes by, they've taken two, three donations from your shit. You're like, yo, what the fuck is going on here? Why? I, I did a one-time thing. I thought I did a one-time thing. Why do they keep taking it every week? Oh, shit. Now you start getting into the, 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 the fine print at the bottom. Okay, not only is this motherfucker taking my shit on a weekly, bi-weekly, monthly fucking basis. This is reoccurring, however it's set up. Not only is he doing that, I'm thinking that he's doing this to help Herschel Walker. But right here, it says that he's getting 90% <laughs> of the funds transferred. So out of every dollar, Donald Trump is receiving 90 cents and Herschel Walker is getting 10 cents. How the fuck is this for Herschel Walker? This is what this man does. And nobody says anything about it. This is what this man's been doing for years. And nobody says anything about it. Again, guys, this is not about, I don't even think, I think being the president is just the cherry on, on, on top because he get, he can get away with a lot more shit. But if, if option B, if second place is I get to steal hundreds of millions of dollars from these fucking idiots, I'm sure, I'm sure he's okay with that as well. If I could get my legal my legal bills paid for and paint my jet and buy this golf course over here, fuck it, it was, it was, it was worth running for president again. He don't got to do anything. He's getting free money. At least the chicks on OnlyFans are popping their asses. <laughs> this man is sitting on the fucking toilet putting out a goddamn uh, a trophy, a truth, a trophy as he would call it. And he continues to get away with it. The Republicans say nothing. Why don't they say anything about it? Because they're fucking scared. They know the monster they created. They know. And they don't know how to deal with it. The cat is out the bag. The genie is out the bottle. How do you get the genie back in the bottle? <laughs> and Ron thinks his little slick remarks. Ron, Ron thinks his little look, check the scoreboard. And Donald don't give a fuck. And when a person doesn't give a fuck, they always have the upper hand. That is just fucking human physics, human logic, human whatever. If one person doesn't give a fuck, they have an edge. And no matter what, Donald Trump is the most I don't give a fuck person in this country, at least. The only other motherfucker that may top him is motherfuckers like Kim Jong Un and Vladimir Putin. But in this country, I promise you, there is nobody in that sphere of power that gives a fuck less than Donald Trump. It's just it's it does it. Look at his track record. Check the history. This man does not care, and that's fucking dangerous. And you guys created this. So again, I'm hoping in the next year or so, they're so busy in their bullshit, and they're infighting, that the Democrats can just do what the fuck they want to do. Do what they need to do, I should say. You know, there's going to be so much shit going on between Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump or Donald Trump and whoever the fuck he's running against. Because it's clear he's running now. He announced it and he got ahead of Ron DeSantis in that regard. Ron just won reelection. He can't come out tomorrow and say I'm running for president. And again, that's because he gives a fuck. Donald Trump wouldn't care. Donald Trump would have won it and announced it the same fucking night. I promise you that. Again, it's 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 going to be a very, very hairy situation. And I'm very much looking forward to that party start to crumble. Start to crumble. Because the person that they made the strongest, the most influential person in their party is Donald Trump. And no matter what, Donald Trump's got the juice. I don't give a fuck about what no poll says. I don't give a fuck about what any donors are doing and not doing. Donald Trump has a cult. And that cult, no matter what Donald Trump says, does, what they have an excuse for it, they would bail Donald Trump out, no fucking question. They would get their money together. They would bail Donald Trump out. 
and and I just people might like Ron DeSantis, but he's clearly not fucking there yet. I don't care how big of a win it was in Florida history. Donald Trump got the second most votes in the history of the fucking world, not the United States, the fucking world. 74, 75 million fucking people voted for Donald Trump. And you're telling me if he tells us, puts out a fucking tweet, don't vote, fuck Ron DeSantis, something along those lines, enough people aren't going to vote and Donald Trump will do it just to spite Ron. And speaking of just the spite, let's let's switch it up a little bit because there's something else I wanted to talk about uh, before I get to some uh, relatively big news at the end of the podcast. <clears throat> so there's been a whole bunch of hoobla in the sports world recently, and 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 one of the things that continues to irritate the fucking shit out of me for years now is Odell Beckham. Okay, now Odell had Pro Bowl worthy, All Pro worthy seasons early on in his career. In anybody's NFL career, especially a wide receiver, even ones that are in the Hall of Fame are going to the Hall of Fame. You may only have three, four of those types of seasons throughout your whole entire career, whether that's at the beginning, middle, or end of your career. You're only going to have so many of those seasons. Now, on a season-to-season basis after that, throughout a 12, 13-year Hall of Fame career, you're going to have so-so seasons. You're going to have seasons where if things go right, yes, you could make the Pro Bowl, but if someone else is eating, they're probably going to make the Pro Bowl, a.k.a. borderline 1,000-yard seasons. You know? Okay. So, (laughs) Odell went from complaining, moaning, bitching about being a pro bowler with the Giants. He wanted to go to the fucking Browns. Bad if you guys can, if you guys don't remember. Bad. He was ready to play with Baker Mayfield. He wanted to go play with his old teammate Jarvis Landry. Oh, this is going to be so great. Da, da 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 da. He goes to Cleveland and he does well. He has over 1000 yards, I believe, two out of the 3 years he was there. Has over a thousand yards. Again, you're putting yourself on pace to have a Hall of Fame career. You shut the fuck up. You get your thousand. You get your eleven hundred here. Maybe the uh, year after you'll pop for thirteen, fourteen again. Maybe one year you'll have twelve touchdowns and and ten fifty receiving. You know, it's just. Guys, nobody has 1,500 yards a season. Nobody has 1,400 yards every single season. Jerry Rice barely fucking did that. But I digress on that point. So you go and do that. Then you start bitching about the quarterback. You start putting out videos of him missing throws and this and that. Okay, he did miss throws. Everybody misses throws. I'm sure if if we're grading, for anybody that doesn't know, when you play football, you get graded on every single play. You get a plus, you get a minus on every single play in practice and in games. This is how this works. You get a plus, you get a minus, you get a little comment sometimes. So you're telling me, Odell, you you hit 100% every week? You hit that block uh, the exact way you were supposed to? You cut that route at exactly the fucking yardage every single time? No, don't give me that bullshit. Okay? So, instead of just being a decent teammate, motherfuckers just made the playoffs. Okay, I didn't do everything that I wanted to do, but we made the playoffs being a good team player. You bitch, you moan, you complain. Now we're down to about 40 yards a game receiving. Why? Because you're a pain in the ass and you're hurt. You request the trade. Or no, 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 no. You tear your ACL, you come back, shit don't really work the way that you want it to. You request the trade. You get traded to the Rams, who at the time were already one or two in the NFC. But for whatever reason, you come over... You you score a couple touchdowns because it's not like you're you're you're, you're not roasting dudes anymore. You're averaging legit thirty eight yards a game, but you scored a couple touchdowns. All right, cool. 
You have a good first half of the Super Bowl. You catch a touchdown. Again, you are still averaging 38 yards a game. You bitch, you moan, you complain, you get mad at a dude who... Rewind, rewind again, rewind. You get hurt in, in the in the Super Bowl. You're a free agent. For whatever reason, you're under some assumption that teams should give you a nice fat contract and then just keep you on the sidelines like you are a Jerry Rice or you are a T.O. Teams aren't doing that. The media can hype you up like you're the, like you're this type of uh, player, but you're not. The coaches know that. They're not giving you a fat contract off of two knee surgeries on the same knee. But for whatever reason, the media loves you. They keep running with it. And the amount of coverage that this man gets for, a- for averaging 38 yards a game over the course of the past two, three years is absolutely absurd. Absolutely. They got people out here thinking Odell is still a top 10, top, top 15 receiver. There are receivers right now that you don't even know their fucking names that are doing better than 38 yards a game. They're just, that's just the reality. Okay, so now Odell's beef after three years of averaging between 38 and 40 yards a game. Look it up, quote me, write it down, take a picture. Odell is mad that Nike does not want to pay him $20 million. Now, I am sure somewhere in that contract, they have a get out. It may entitle you to some money, but I am sure Nike has a get out of their contract with you. And can you really, truly blame them for not wanting to pay $20 million for 38 yards a game? It doesn't matter how bad ESPN wants to push your one catch, your two catches. That is not what Nike is paying you that amount of money for. They're not. They could go get some young cat fresh out of college and give him half of that. And he's going to put up better numbers than that. So Odell being upset. I get I get being upset. I get being upset. But who are you mad at? You mad at Nike or you mad at yourself? Are you mad at Nike or are you mad at yourself? And again, this is about being self-aware, guys. This is very much about being self-aware. I know I don't have any $20 million deal. I was never offered no $20 million deal. Not, nothing like that. But that doesn't mean... <laughs> that doesn't mean that I can't point out the fact or the obvious that Odell does not deserve a $20 million fucking Nike deal anymore. Dude, you're at the point with the way that you're playing over the past five fucking years. You're like local car dealership deal nowadays. Nike is not paying you for 38 yards a fucking game. That's not happening. Especially when you're probably going to come back and hurt your knee or hurt something else again, man. You're not getting any fucking younger. You're not getting any younger. And if you've had to have two surgeries on the same goddamn knee, it's probably not good post 30 years old, man. So, yeah, there's that. And there's one other thing I wanted to talk about before before I got out of here because I can't stand the goddamn Cowboys. And I guess they're supposed to be in the running for Odell. And I honestly, I hope he goes there because if he goes there, I know he's not going to do shit. <laughs> <laughs> but there's one person on the goddamn Cowboys that I also think is deserving absolutely positively too much hype. Too much hype. And that's Micah Parsons. And I love me some Penn State Nittany Lion linebackers. I love them. I love them. Even when Sean Lee was on the Cowboys, I liked Sean Lee. You know, <laughs> can't stand the Cowboys, but I like Sean Lee, and I like, and I would like to like Micah Parsons. But the way that they talk about this dude every single week, it's like he revolutionized the way that the position of linebackers played. 
They're like, look, sometimes he's rushing the pass or sometimes he's out on the slot. Sometimes he's doing he's doing what linebackers do. A good linebacker, a good linebacker does a little bit of everything. He covers slot receivers, not just tight ends, because he's so good they don't want to take him off the field to to put somebody else in there that might be able to cover them a little better, but he could still do it, and he could do other things too. He's covering slots. He's covering tight ends. He's, he's, he's lining up off ball. He's This is what linebackers do. And when he's rushing the passer, guys, I got to be honest, I am seeing zero pass rush moves. He's super fucking fast off the line, and that's how he's beating people. But he is not working pass rush moves. and do- No, no, no. And then what really irritates me about Micah, it's not even all that. Because, okay, speed is an element that you can use to get to the quarterback. It is what it is. What really irritates me is every single time that this man gets blocked... He throws his hands up in the air. He has a little fucking tantrum. He's fucking on Twitter bitching about it. Guys, it's football. You play linebacker. How are you expecting a fucking penalty every single time someone blocks you? That shit irritates me, man. You got blocked. Line up. Fucking get him next time. It's, it's, it's fucking mayhem with the Cowboys. They are absolutely... Even last week, how is that game that hyped up? How was that game that hyped up? They were playing the fucking, what, four and five Packers. But it's hyped up because the Cowboys were fucking, what they have? Did they have two losses at the t- time? Whatever the case may be. Because, because they're doing well this season. But now after they lose to the motherfucking Packers, now is Dak Prescott a top ten quarterback? Da, da, da. Listen, Dak Prescott wins next week. You guys are going to be right back on his jock. Right back on it. <sighs> Shit, man. <laughs> All right, guys. I want to. I want to wrap things up here, but I did want to talk to you guys first about the giveaway that I'm doing. Um, if you guys don't know, I've been super into the Pokemon cards again in the past couple months. I've been doing pack openings. Check check a few of them out. The more recent ones are better video quality because I finally figure out how to use everything. So I recommend checking out some of the newer ones versus the earlier ones. The earlier ones look like dog shit. I can't even lie. Even the newer ones aren't great like from a production standpoint, but at least the video's clear. <laughs> so... I've been doing that a lot lately, and I wanted to figure out a way to promote the channel. So, I'm gonna do a, I'm going to do a Pokemon box giveaway. I'm gonna do the V Star, or not the V Star, a V Box, which usually comes with four or five packs, promotional cards. It's a nice little setup. And they look cool. Um, I don't know exactly which one I'm gonna do yet, but I am going to do one, and I'm looking to, to um end the nominees on December 10th or 11th I believe I said it was so it gives us about three weeks to do this I need you guys to like comment subscribe Um, if you leave a comment a like something like that something that I could see and track and put a a account to the like or the the comment something along those lines I'm going to Write write down the username and I'm going to put it in a hat for every entry that you do this for. So you could do one per video going forward. You could do it on the podcast episodes. You could do it on the pack opening episodes. Like, comment, subscribe. For each video that you do that on, I'll throw I'll throw your name in a hat and then we'll do a live draw. <clears throat> I might do two. I might do like a first place draw and like a second, like a runner up type of thing. Do do kind of two. Have one bigger thing and then one smaller thing. But like I said, I want to get this sent out uh, around December 10th or 11th so you can have it for Christmas. And if it's not there before Christmas, at least you get like a late Christmas gift um, along with the 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 box that I'm going to send. I'm also going to send 
uh, some sleeves, some some penny savers, and some sleeves for a three ring binder, just in case you're just starting up collecting Pokemon cards like I was recently, and you need to you know keep them somewhat safe. You could put them in these. I'm not gonna give you guys a binder. You guys can do that on your own, but I will. <laughs> but I will send uh, enough penny sleeves to cover all the cards that you have, and I will send enough of the three ring binder sleeves to cover the amount of cards that you have along with along with the 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 box and and probably i'll probably do like a small tin or tin or something like that for runner up so like i said guys like comment subscribe i should have done this at the beginning of the video i'll probably put out a separate one in the next couple days promoting this as well but definitely you know, join in. Why not? It's something free. If you guys don't want it, you can re-gift it to somebody that does like this type of stuff. Whatever you want to do with it, I don't care. I'm just trying to promote the channel, and uh, I'm 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 in the giving mood. It's it's December. I got 85% of my Christmas shopping done already, so I'm kind of in the swing of things and. You know, I just want to give my audience a little gift to let them know that I appreciate you tuning in on a week-to-week -week basis, and I appreciate you engaging, engaging with me, whether that's through Instagram or, or, or text message or however the case you may get through to me. Um, but yeah, definitely looking forward to that, and I definitely want as many people to sign up as possible. So, you know, spread the word, and, and we're definitely going to get that out to you guys, hopefully before Christmas. But yeah, guys, with that said, I got pretty much everything I need to get off my chest off my chest right now. There are some other football issues that I want to bitch and complain about, but I believe me and Duff are going on tonight, so I'll save that for that. Um, but yeah, guys, besides that, I appreciate you guys tuning in. This is 130 episodes down. That's not including the pack openings and stuff like that. That is 130 episodes of the Big Kids Podcast in the books, guys. We've been at it for a while. Again, we, we still have not popped the way that I wanted to pop, but guys, I got people that are listening every week. I have people that are... I have new people tuning in every couple weeks. I've got some new listeners. So again... Just trying to build a little community. I enjoy doing it. I enjoy the editing process. I enjoy the preparation process. It, it keeps my mind as sharp as sharp as sharp as sharp as it could possibly be. And and I'm gonna keep working at it. And I'm just gonna you know keep on keeping on. It's the game we play, guys. You gotta find something you're interested in to keep your fucking mind young. And that's what I'm gonna keep trying to do. Um, but like always, guys, I want you to be safe, be easy, and wash your ass. I'm out of here. Peace.